Hello everyone. Um, today we're going to look at how to find the right side, sorry, how to find the side of a right triangle using trigonometry. So we're just going to focus on finding the side here, okay? Um, before we start, there are a couple other videos that um, I hope you have watched before watching this one that I have made. Uh, the first one's called Intro to Trig Part 1, and there's also another one called Intro to Trig Part 2. So before you watch this, because that will get you familiar with sine, cosine, and tangent, what they mean, and also words like opposite, adjacent, and hypotenuse. Okay, so that's uh, something you need to do before you watch this video. Um, now, the next step is make sure your calculator is in degree mode. By the way, what kind of calculator will you be using for this stuff? Make sure it can change a degree to a decimal properly. Well, don't worry about that, but I, I will show you two different types of calculators right now. There's a uh, an old-fashioned type, which surprisingly are, are on uh, iPhones, etc., where it looks something like this. And um, anyway, you want to make sure that the calculator is in degree mode. So right over here, I can see it's in degree mode by the DEG. A lot of calculators will show DEG or just D. Okay. Some of you have fancier calculators. I'm going to show a picture of a uh, TI-83 right here. Um, to make this calculator in degree mode, so that it gives us the right answer, since we're going to be talking about degrees, um, what you do is you hit the button right here called Mode. And then what you do is you go down two jumps and go across, and you see degree there, and then hit Enter. And then that puts the calculator in degree mode. Without doing that, the answers will all be wrong. Okay, the next step, go over here. Um, we're going to be setting up a proportion in this, and we're going to solve it using something that I've termed Zorro, the Zorro method. If you don't know the Zorro method, heck, there's a video for that too. It's very short, it's probably three or four minutes long, and it shows you how to quickly solve a proportion. Okay, so watch the video on this if you haven't already, and uh, it's really quite useful, as it says. Okay, so let's let's take our first example here. Maybe you've been sitting waiting for this example. Here we go. So we have a triangle here. It's a 90 degree or right right triangle. We know two things about it. We have four centimeters over here. We have 31 degrees over here, and the hypotenuse here we have x. So obviously we're supposed to find this side, which we call the hypotenuse. Um, what we're going to do? I'm just going to get my pen out here. There we go. Let's test it out. There we go. So as I often tell my students, pretend you're standing right here at the 31 degrees, and you're looking across, and you also notice that the X is on the hypotenuse. So because you've watched the other videos, you can quickly say, OK, I'm standing here. Across from me is 4. So across means opposite. The X is the hypotenuse. Which one of the three, sine, cosine, or tangent is opposite and hypotenuse. And you should say, after watching those other videos, that sine is, is the best choice for that situation. Okay, so the way you write it out is you write sine. Beside that, you always write the angle if you know it. It's up to you if you want to put the degree up there. It's not necessary. Sine 31 is all you really need. And then you're going to write sine 31 is equal to, well, opposite and hypotenuse. So make sure the 4 goes on top. Do not put the 4 on the bottom, or this will not work. The hypotenuse is x, so that goes on the bottom. One last time, I'm going to say it. Sine is always equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse. OK, at this point, all we have to do is use the Zorro method to quickly solve this. With the Zorro method, we have two, two, two proportions, which are basically two fractions that equal each other. And remember, under anything, no matter what it is, just a normal number, or even if you had sine 31 like we have here, if you just put a 1 underneath that, it doesn't change anything. It's, it's allowed, OK? You could take your age and put it over 1, and that's actually allowed. If you're 20 years old and you put it over 1, it's still 20. 20 divided by 1, so no problem. OK, how does the Zorro method work? Well, you start at the part that you don't know, and you, you take a little walk, or you do a little Z looking thing or a Z looking thing, depending if you're from you know Canada or United States, we tend to pronounce our Z's and Z's differently, right, folks? Anyway, you go like this: across, 
diagonal, and across. The first two numbers that you meet, you multiply, and the last thing you meet, you divide. Okay, so the first two numbers that you meet, the 1 and the 4, you multiply. 1 times 4 is 4, but 4 divided by sine 31, I have no clue what that is, and this is where we need a calculator. So I'm going to grab two different calculators. I'll start with this one, and I'm going to say, okay, well, 1 times 4, obviously that's equal to 4. Now I'm going to divide it by this calculator here. I'm not sure if you have to go with 31 in sine, or if you can just type in sine 31. Okay, you cannot hit sine first on one of these old-fashioned calculators here. So I'm going to clear it. We want 4 divided by sine 31. On this calculator here, which a lot of iPhones use as well, you actually have to type in 31 first, then hit sine, and then equals. The answer we get is 7 point, I'm going to round it off, 7.8. Let's write that down. The answer we got here, x is equal to, I think it was 7.8. And because we're talking about centimeters, don't forget to include the centimeters. Let's see if we can get that exact same answer using a fancy calculator, like this one. How would you do it on a fancy calculator? Okay, first I'm going to turn it on. Let's see, there's the on button. It's not responding. I'll try with my mouse here. There we go. Thank you, mouse. Okay, we've, we've already got it in degree mode. Great. I'm going to hit clear to go back to this screen. Okay, remember, 4 divided by sine 31. Watch this calculator. 4 divided by sine 31. If you want to, you can close the bracket. And you just hit enter. Look at that, 7.8. These calculators actually write it out very nicely. The other one you had to go 4 divided by 31 and then sine and then equals. Okay? So these fancier calculators, they make it even easier. 7.8, it's the same answer. Alright folks, we just found the side, of the, uh, the side that was missing. Let's do one more question together and that's the end of this video. Okay? This is a situation, let me get my pen back here. There we go, the pen is working. This is a situation we're standing on the 31 degrees again. We look across, we see an X, and we look over here and we have a 3. Well, this is opposite, and this here is not the hypotenuse like before, it's adjacent, okay? Adjacent means beside, okay? So, what is opposite over adjacent? It should almost come to you right away if you've done the other two videos and you've practiced it. You should realize it's tangent. tangent is opposite over adjacent. So let's do that. Tan 31. I'm not going to put the degree sign this time because you don't need to. Be careful. X goes on top. 3 goes on the bottom. Do you remember the, the next step, folks? You are right. Just put a 1 under here. Do the Zorro method. Start at the part that you don't know, which is the X. Could be any letter, by the way. Start at the part you don't know and make something that looks like a Z, even if it's a backwards Z. Go across diagonal and across. The first two things that you meet, tan 31 and 3, you're going to multiply these and then divide by 1. Now remember, dividing by 1 doesn't do anything. So what we want to do here is just go tan 31 times 3. Let's try that using the two calculators. Let's try that using the two calculators that we have. So I'm going to start with the old-fashioned one. I'm going to clear it from the last question and I'm going to start. Now be careful, don't type tan 31 See, it doesn't work. You have to go 31, 10. Okay, now multiply that times by 3. And there is our answer, 1.8. I didn't do the last step, which was to divide by 1. You know why. So 1.8, and once again, it's centimeters. Let's use the new fancy calculator and see if we can get the same answer. Okay. I'm going to bring it up a little bit here. All right, tan 31. This calculator allows me to just type it in as I see it. Close the bracket off because otherwise it'll mess it up. So tan 31, then go divided by 3 equals. Something didn't work out here. You know what I'm thinking? I'm wondering if the mode got reset. 
you know what you know what I did wrong I hope you see it great I'm gonna get a lot of comments about this mistake but you know what I don't have time to edit this so let's do it what did I do wrong we have to learn from our mistakes and we have to admit when we're wrong we have to go 10 31 and with the Zorro method you multiply by 3 not divide and you can see what I did wrong up here I divided by 3 let's multiply boy here it is we got 1.8 we're happy and we are also human. I hope you know how to do this, finding the side of a right triangle now. Great. Have a good one, folks.